thank you for coming to to IIT for school today thank you sir good evening to you how are you doing i'm doing good thank you sir aditya um, so i understand you've been working with hsbc for some time and i think uh, you did our business analytics program and after that you transitioned your role into from i think uh, process uh, kyc process yes. to yes. being a business uh, analyst in yeah. hsbc so i would like to understand what your journey then i'll also like to understand what tips you can probably give to anybody who's preparing for a similar role in hsbc and uh, also i would like to uh, get some tips for the current learners who are uh, in iit pro school who are doing this program what kind of tips you could so let's start with your role what exactly do you do at hsbc right now as a business analyst sure. so i am working very closely in ac team on okay. climate risk analytics it's more of focusing on definition of emissions scope definition and also working very closely with business in terms of physical risk supply chain emissions climate related stress testing and also scenario analysis so what we do is that it works very closely with the business to understand how much of an impact it is making in terms of the emissions overall emissions output and also how much we are working very closely with the finance team to ensure whatever we are the bank is financing whether it is actually in terms of sustainable or is there something that we can need to work on as you are aware that uh, this goes into the ai so right. it's very closely monitored Absolutely. by the bank as well as its different shareholders we need to document everything so i work very closely with that i presently my team has another two business analysts in capacity okay. i work with the own emission speeds of the world whereas there are others who are working with client transition journey which is when you onboard a client how you know the client is working with its pc throughout its entire scope till the time because we are also financing the plant absolutely similarly we also have supply chain emissions because it is bc or any big multinational they will have multiple suppliers working with them so we also need to document what the emissions that is associated to them obviously. so ultimately the main role is to document the environmental impact document the Sorry. carbon footprint document all that data so that maybe you can get some carbon credits or your clients can get some carbon credit yes exactly in terms of carbon credit as well as well as uh, to understand that where we are in terms of our presence because okay. we are claiming to be net zero you know that uh, we are the Paris agreement yeah mm-hmm. so it's very important for the ceo and for everyone that okay how are we moving into that absolutely and there are also a lot of like every bank has initiatives like they are moving towards reducing their fleet mm-hmm. reducing their email exchanges absolutely. or reducing business travels slowly transitioning to a more sustainable mm-hmm. way that is what we have to work on the resources so the data must be coming from various different sources it's it's actually very i would not say uh, various sources only but it's we are also depend on a lot of suppliers for that information so it's not very i would say on your face kind of uh, data it's, it's not the same data but it's no, no, it's external data it's majorly external data and we also have to work with a lot of teams like i told you amex is one of them right, right so right. we have to work very closely with amex to understand okay mm-hmm. you're giving me the data how much of a you know and they also have their internal uh, parameters right okay so this person is traveling this much mm-hmm. this can be the associated carbon emissions we also need to work on that to understand that logic is actually correct absolutely it makes sense so aditya tell me uh, you made a transition to business mm-hmm. uh, in analytics role and now you're working with a lot of data and everything and you had done a program as well business analytics yes so let's talk about that let's talk about the impact of that program and you know how is that how did that program help you to transition to this role so uh, previously to this role i was working in compliance as a kyc sure. analyst i would work with clients as well but it was not really in a data scope of things sure. it's more about onboarding the client and you know client due diligence world of things when i enrolled myself because i also got through from one of my friends from here the thing is that i think the most this helped me to understand is the data side and the numerical side of things so when i'm working with the data i think you will agree with me that's the primary focus is to understand the logic behind the numbers not right. really the numbers absolutely and that is one of the things which i think we had a lot of use cases over here we would go through a lot of uh, during the classes as well as well as during when we are giving the assignments and all so it's very helpful that we the case study the exactly, business problems yeah right. the, so we would go through that and i think that helped me develop a mindset wherein um, i'm not only required to see any number also uh, 
uh, required to find the logic behind the numbers. And that is also one of the things where you will agree with me that, you know, being a data professional, that data anomaly is one of the biggest things in our world, right? right, right. We would have instances where no data is available. That's Absolutely. Right. So we need to understand why rather than, okay, fine, this is given to me, let's just take it and move it. So you're saying that inferring what the data is saying is very, very important Absolutely. than just uh, to work with the data. Yeah. So the business in inference and the business application of the data is very important. Absolutely. Is what you're Absolutely. And I think that helped me a lot because uh, when we are doing the use cases also, that would require us to focus on like, I'm using one formula in one, for I'm just giving a reference of Excel. I'm using one formula in one case. That is not necessarily that that formula will work on a different case. Mm -hmm. So you need to use your brain. You need to understand, okay, I'm, this is my output I have to reach here. So what is the necessary things I can do to mm -hmm. get that output? Similarly with the data as well. I get a data from somebody that makes sense to me, but that does not necessarily mean that's the last part of it. I need to understand, okay, fine, I have it, but what is the objective? Absolutely right. Okay. So you're saying that, you know, the use cases that we make people work upon, so many case studies and projects, and it's all a of lot. them are, it's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. Yeah, of course, it's a lot. But uh, what I also believe is, Aditya, you finished those things, right? You yes, yes, yes. So um, I used, I enrolled myself in the weekend classes. Mm -hmm. um, it was, I would say, Balancing because I had to come over here to attend the mm. classes physically as well as I was working. But that flexibility was definitely there. I could attend it online, online as well as physically. As well as physically. I prefer to give the exams when I'm here on here. So it's you know more it's systematic and if Absolutely. there is any sort of service outages, I can directly get in touch with the technical team and get it sorted out. So yeah. Very good. Um, so you like that flexibility, you worked on cases, you worked yeah. on business cases and most most of more importantly, you actually finish the program. Yeah. That is one of the most important lessons that I also like to communicate to my daughter that if you've started, please try to finish all the modules yes. because if you actually do that, then you will definitely learn and you will definitely gain. Uh, one more thing I, I wanted to ask you, Aditya. Um, I was I was looking at your journey, right? And I think uh, now that you are pretty established in this, uh, this role, uh, where do you think, you know, uh, where do you think this role will go uh, towards now that you know a lot of AI has come, a lot of Gen AI has come, do you see any transition happening in your role, or what is the new thing that you think if you have to learn something new in today's time, what is that new thing that you would want to invest your time and effort in? I think one of the things that I definitely would like to learn now, there are two things that I have currently in my mind. One is more related to the stress testing world of things. Sure. It's more about credit risk modeling. Yeah. Yeah. So that is one of my very, you know, I, fa I fancy mm -hmm. that a lot because I, I cool. have a lot of my friends who are working credit risk modeling. Mm -hmm. They're working with credit risk strategies. Mm -hmm. I would say, you know, model risk governance, understanding uh -huh. the concept of, let's say, decision sciences is where right. I would like to put it. And similarly, if you want to ask me another thing, I would say chat GPT and AI tools because uh, I not just chat GPT, maybe I think what you, what you want to say is that Gen AI. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so not exactly chat yeah. GPT, I'll just rephrase that. So, most probably the Gen AI piece of things, mm -hmm. more importantly, because I also have a team mm -hmm. who is based out of Hong Kong. So, mm -hmm. they work extensively on that. So, their, their responsibility is to prepare a sort of design for the clients mm -hmm. when they, you know, when they're coming back to us to understand and predict. That this might be a possible reason why you might face because you know we also work a lot with finance Absolutely. and they also need to use that to understand whether it is actually sustainable to finance that building or right. finance that project for that matter these are the two main focus areas i would see myself looking into currently i have been doing this for another three four years now mm. so i'm actually looking to also transition something to that let's see uh, i hope no, I no, very good i mean we have trained a lot of people at least two three thousand people in this modeling and uh, although we have done it as uh, as corporate partners of large enterprises, now we are also launching it for individuals as well, uh, specific courses on credit risk modeling. So that is uh, that is a very good domain to focus on. And second thing you mentioned about Gen AI, I think every person, irrespective of the domain uh, where they work, not just in data, within even outside of data, world data and AI world, I believe everybody should know how to build at least a basic Gen AI tool uh, because it brings humongous amount of productivity and efficiency into whatever we do. So I think these are two very good uh, career paths that you're thinking or learning paths that you, you're thinking of very good. I think the one last thing I want to ask you, if you had to give some three to five tips to the current learners uh, who are doing our data science, data analytics or AI programs, uh, what kind of tips would you want to give Aditya? 
I think I can summarize it to one one sentence is uh, to just understand the tool, understand the logic. Okay, very good. We'll be ready to it. Any any tip while they are actually doing the program because a lot of people feel that you know we give them a lot of projects, a lot of cases, and there are weekly assignments, there are weekly due dates. Anything? I mean, you are a working professional. We we hear this excuse from a lot of our uh, learners that you know I am a working professional. How do I manage so much of workload? So what kind of you manage it? And there are so many other people also you uh, have you seen managing. So any kind of time management tips that you can give to them? I think. Uh, Exactly, time management because I feel everybody's challenges is different. But yeah. I think the only thing that I can say is that you have to do it. I think that's what I always you you have to do it. Yeah. That has to be that's again I'll just summarize in one yeah. sentence. You have to do it. That's that's the only thing you can do. Okay, nothing else. All right, Aditya, thanks a lot for coming in tonight. Thank you so Thanks. much, sir. Thank you All so much.